What's up guys and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and as you can see I'm stuck in a wall right now and I'm trying to remedy the situation but I'll figure it out eventually I promise we will get out of here. Let me try some things real quick and this is not the best way to open an episode but I think I can fix this. I can there we go I fixed it. You have no idea how long I've been sitting there stuck in the wall. That wall is the most dangerous thing I've faced so far. So to do a brief recap of where we were at in this series we had left home in the last episode and gathered some things that we needed to survive. Now, right now, I've made the decision to travel to the northwest. We're going to do our best to survive all the way up that way. And if we make it, I think there's going to be a lot of goodies. There's going to be some nom-noms. There's going to be some bang-bangs. There's going to be some all kinds of good stuff that we can get our hands on. Basically, anything that will cut, shred, or destroy our enemies is what I'm on the lookout for now. And that house, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not even going to mess with that house because it tried to kill me. Well, maybe... What am I f recoiling from? Is it you? Maybe? Their eyeball flew out. That's lovely. Anyways, I'm going to try and do a little bit more combat as we go through here because we do want to start to level up some like kind of weapon skill. Get ourselves rolling with some kind of ass kickery. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're pretty much inept at anything that resembles those lines. It looks like we got another zombie coming. I thought I saw... Oh, no. Ah! No! And that's how they get you, right there. They come out of the middle of nowhere, and that was an angry swing right there. I dig that. That was a swing that had some vengeance behind it. So let's take this guy out too, and then we'll see to our wounds and see what's going on. Alright, so he's down now. Let's go ahead and check ourselves. We're scratched on our left foot. So we need to go to our inventory. And we're going to take the bandages and apply them to our left foot. And you'll see that little bar right there. And that will now say bandaged. If you don't bandage it, that's bad. It's going to keep on just drip, drip, dripping blood everywhere you get yourself into trouble. Unfortunately, we had a sneak attack ninja subterfuge zombie that came out of the middle of nowhere. We are in pain as well, which means our movement speed is going to be reduced. But it's not so bad. We're just cut up a little bit. Let's climb through this window, and since the house conspired to end our LP early, I'm going to try and see if there's anything useful in here, although I can't guarantee that there will be. It looks like, as of yet, oh, the refrigerator is well stocked. Okay, so let's grab some of this stuff right here. We're not going to take the steaks or anything, because as of yet, I don't think we're going to be spending much of our time cooking. But all of these goodies right here, these need to go back to the house with us once we get a little bit further on into the city. So let's go ahead, and the second we loot them, I need to put them back into our toady bag. And so, once our tote bag is all ready to roll, we got some peas here. Let's eat the peas. I loathe peas in real life. Peas are disgusting. I just, I don't get the appeal. Additionally, we want this buff for being slightly fed because it's going to help us heal a little bit quicker. If we go to our menu right here, you'll see that this is ticking upwards. We should more or less be fine. A scratch has the possibility of turning into an infection. Hopefully, that's not the case. There's another school bag here with what appears to be, let me see if I can get this to loot up here, a blouse, a school bag, and a skirt. Nothing there that I actually want. The school bags took a nerf in the last build, unfortunately. As I mentioned in the previous episode, they are not nearly as useful as they used to be. So unfortunately, you just kind of have to live with the fact that you need to find a duffel bag is what it comes down to. Opening up that window right there, we're going to climb on in and get ready. There's one right there. So we are going to handle him. Oh, no. Climb! Arr! We just barely made it out of the building. That is a lot of zombies for such a small house. I should probably be a little more careful. We're no longer wounded, and in the next day or two, we'll have to pay attention to make sure that we don't show signs of infection. It's a distinct possibility. I am going to handle these zombies, even though I'm wasting my weapon durability by doing it, because we need to level up our blunt... Is the back door open? Oh, I thought that was a back door. Never mind. Well... We might consider sneaking in through the back, possibly. Seeing what type of terrible trouble we can get ourselves into. And I think we killed one. We killed two. Nice. Got them both in one even ninja swoop. You gotta watch the back windows, my friends. You got to watch the back windows. I'm gonna take the orange sodas. And once we've got those, let's take a look in the rest of these cabinets. Chips are going to be good. Chips are lightweight, and they do a lot of nutrition sometimes. So chips are what we're going to want to hold on to. Looking for other things that we can store stuff in. Receptacles, possibly. Fill my empty mug real quick. And fill it again, because we are apparently very thirsty. There's a bleach and razor in there, but I don't think anybody's going to care about our shaved legs or otherwise in the destroyed world of Project Zomboid. Hygiene and social fashion 
I don't think are going to be high on the list of things we need to obtain, so... But as I was saying before, every scratch and bite has a possibility to get infected. It is something that may come up in the long run, so you really... You want to be careful whenever you get one, so... Let's check these other houses here. Let's check this little shed first and foremost. Sometimes these tool sheds have some very useful stuff in them, and it doesn't hurt to take a look. So let's climb on in and hope that there's no burglar alarm. And it looks like we've got a cabinet here with sheets, a yo-yo, and some extra stuff in them. We'll check the shelves as well. There's a golf club, something that might be useful to us down the line if our bat ever decides to break. We are going to be over-encumbered at this point, but we do want to check all of these shelves. There's a flashlight and some nails. I'm going to take all the nails because you're going to go through a lot of nails when you're trying to craft. Opening up my inventory here, let's go ahead and stow away the golf club. Hopefully it gets us down below weight. I can't guarantee that it will, but we can try. We can do our best. Put the soda there. And so carrying capacity always seems to be my limiting reagent here when I play this game. Let's go ahead and head back to the house. Can we open the shutter? No, the shutter can't be opened. That's fine. Whatever. And we'll hold down the E key here, bail through that window, and let's head back down to the southeast. Now, I did trigger a burglar alarm on the way up here to film this episode, so unfortunately there may be several large groups of nasties waiting for us on our homecoming, but we do need to stow this stuff away. I apologize if it doesn't seem that thrilling. The gameplay does revolve pretty heavily around just pack ratting. I mean, if this is if you're one of those people that very much likes to just pack rat things away and create huge stockpiles of stuff, this is definitely a game you want to check out because I can... I can tell you honestly that after some of my playthroughs, I've had enormous stockpiles of just random garbage sitting around. I've got a pretty good crowd of zombies down here. This might be the house that I set the alarm off at, so let's go around the long way. We'll sneak on through the woods here. Hopefully there's nothing on the other side. Nope. Okay, we're safe. And then we'll just walk down the middle of the road like a zombie-killing badass, kind of zombie land style. Cool music blazing, explosions behind us, just all that fun stuff. We need to get some Molotov cocktails. This game is so much more fun when you play around with Molotov cocktails. Now, we're past that house. Let's go this way. And I am going to attempt... I'm going to try and scavenge anything we come across along the way. There's some more zombies. So we obviously don't want to go that way, but I know my house is down here somewhere. There's a dead guy right there. I don't know if that's a survivor, one of the metagame survivors, or if that's one of the zombies that I killed earlier. We're also getting drowsy, so we definitely want to fall back to a location where we can sleep for the evening. We're getting drowsy a little bit earlier because I woke up too early this morning. I got up at like 6.30 on accident, and so I think this is the house before we get back to our house. Zombies, are you out here? Okay. And so I think our house is this one over here. There's this little sheddy thing, and then I think this is our house. I'll check and make sure all the shutters and things are in place. Yeah, this is our house. All right, so let's store away some of our goodies that we've gathered for the day here. And now that I have unstuck myself from the wall, I just can't let that go. That is terrifying, attempting to keep a game from being lost while sitting stuck in a wall. And we'll find some things to put away here. So we'll throw everything into the fridge. There are things that I do want to bring along with me on the next trip so that we don't have to scavenge for them. Right now, the prime things that I'm really looking for are receptacles for water. I'm looking for food, and non-perishable food would start to be nice. So I may consider starting to grab things like, oh, maybe grabbing things along the lines of... Not perishables, but canned food. Um... So things like dog food, things of that nature. We also need to find a can opener so that we can get into the cans that we capture. Now, I need to store the rest of the stuff down here. We'll throw the golf club in there so that we have a backup weapon. Very important because your items will show wear and tear. I'll show you guys that interface in just a moment where you can look at the durability of the items you have on hand. We're going to throw those in there as well. We'll throw the mugs in here. So we've got three mugs. So we're up to four mugs now. Four mugs and two bowls that we can fill with water. We'll throw the cigarettes in there too because they are like the universe's most heavy cigarettes. I picked those up on the way up to the spot where the episode started. And I did mention that, you know, I like to smoke every now and again. Don't start the habit. I prefer cigars though. Cigarillos every now and again. It's one of those pastimes that is very enjoyable as long as you don't have a problem. And so now we're going to throw, yeah, we'll throw the sweater in there too. It doesn't matter. Then we'll also, we're going to keep the painkillers on us just in case anything goes wrong. It never hurts to have pills here. So we're going to try and have at least a couple pills on hand in case things go 
just morbidly wrong, unfortunately. I think what I'm going to do is, since we're hungry and I need a better thing to... Let's grab one of those orange sodas. I'm actually going to drink an orange soda right now. And I'm going to use that from now on to hold my water. And so we should get an empty pop bottle there. Yeah. Great. And so what I'll do is I'll fill the empty pop bottle. And that should last a little bit longer. I think it's got more charges than our... I think that's like a liter bottle or possibly like... I don't know. It's... I'm pretty sure it holds more than a mug. And that gives us the opportunity to actually go down here to this cabinet and take that mug out of our inventory. I'm going to keep the chips with me in case we get hungry on the road. We'll eat before we get up in the morning. I'm going to sit here for just a second. Hopefully there's nothing in my house. I really hope there's not. And what else was in this house? I know there's a couple things that I left in the cabinets here. Let's take a look. There's some socks so we can put like a cue ball in a sock or something if we really need to. Always sleep with the door shut. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last episode. It's in your best interest to always sleep with the door shut. I'm going to bypass time just a little bit so that we're more tired here. There we go. But you don't want to bypass too much time because there is a punishment for that. If you bypass too much time, you'll get bored. And then you've got to read magazines or do something to get yourself unbored, which is... It can actually be a problem. If you get too bored, you get depressed. If you get depressed, you start to go crazy and you need antidepressants. You start seeing things. It just gets all around nasty. We're not hungry yet, but I am going to peruse the fridge real fast and grab one thing of carrots out of there. We're going to eat it. There we are. And the water bottle is still somewhat full, I think. We'll drink out of the faucet real quick just to make sure. And then we're going to go back on out into the world and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. So as I recall, the distribution of zombies was mostly to the northwest. So I'm going to cut westward mostly. And I said that I would show you how this works here. You can actually open this up with this little button right here. Maybe small on YouTube, but you can actually go through and look at the condition of your weapon. When this bar fills up all the way, it breaks. So right now it's at plus 70. If it ever gets down to plus zero, we are in a just world of hurt. And that's why I decided to keep that golf club, actually. Did he actually see me from that far away? God, that sucks. So let's go ahead, and we're going to make our way up this way. I'm not really going to sprint there. You can level up your sprint if you look at your skills interface. So sprinting from place to place can be useful. We've killed 15 zombies. Really, it doesn't feel like I've killed that many. So if you look right here, you do gain XP from sneaking, being lightfooted, and sprinting. Unfortunately, it just doesn't happen very often, so... Leveling up sprint and all that fun stuff takes a little bit of time. And look at these potholes. God, the municipality needs to take responsibility for this kind of stuff. I guess we aren't paying taxes anymore, so... You know why they call them potholes? They used to put pots upside down in them. That's why. So that wagon wheels could just go straight over the tops and not have to worry about it. I think I've looted this house already. All the windows are open, so it has that distinct look of a house that I've already taken everything from. And as we spread out here a little bit... It's going to get a little more dangerous. So we've got another dead body over here. The zombies seem to have spread out. They were all clustered in this field a little bit earlier, but it looks like they've actually dispersed a tad. They've actually spread out a little bit. And so we're still going to be heading to the northwest. I've actually never gone into town in this build. They have increased the size of the map by just leaps and bounds since the last time I played. Last time I was in Knox County, I think there was only like four streets in this game. It was like a big square with an extra little like shopping mall type region and then a big empty field where you could build stuff. And I'm really interested to see what kind of things are hidden here. I've seen kind of railroad type places, just interesting little things here and there. Hopefully we don't strike terrible luck with burglar alarms. I should probably check the front door. There you go. Problem solved. And if an alarm goes off in here, it's going to be awful. Because we do have enemies all around us. So we're going to grab that bowl. We're going to take that food. There's peanut butter. Peanut butter is really good. You actually want to grab that. It's a comfort food. It makes you happier. It makes everything work out better. We'll take that other tote bag just in case we end up needing it. Looks like there's another bowl here. We'll take that so we can fill it with water. There's some ramen noodles. Ramen noodles are nice, but they make you thirsty. So after they turn the water off and everything in the future, we may find ourselves in trouble. A water bottle. Amazing. And an orange soda. So we just found two liquid receptacles two containers for water in one little area which is going to help us out enormously one of those bottles can last you like a full day and so as long as oh god that made me jump let's see if we can beat her down real quick all right she's dead so there's the possibility of she was hiding in a closet anything in here Nothing in here. So they've got to be outside. Hold on. Let's go check the perimeter real fast. I don't want to loot. Okay, so that guy must have seen us through the window. Let's go out and handle him. Oh, God. There's another one. Oh, we've got a nice little crowd going. 
Okay, that's unfortunate. We're a little bit panicked. We're a little bit, you know, nervous and panicked, but it's okay. That one's down. And then we're going to go ahead and let's see if we can take him out too. There we go. So he's now dead. And then that one just broke a window, which is going to draw the attention of a couple more zombies. Yeah, there comes that one. Unfortunately, we're going to have to take the time to clear them out because I didn't get the chance to take everything out of the upstairs floor. Or the upstairs floor. I'm kind of gargling my words right now. It's weird how this game affects your blood pressure. It really does. And not in like that negative, I'm so angry type of way. It's more like things jump out at you pretty frequently. There's a bunch of zombies in the house. I don't even know how they got in here. So let's go ahead and draw as many of them outside as we can. Oh, he tried to bite me. God. Baiting these guys can be very, very dangerous for your health. They tend to grab onto you when you least expect it. Now, there should be one by the window right here, I think. Which makes me a little nervous to get going. Oh, no. That one actually walked through the door. The door does not provide you with, like, a plane of protection at all. So you got to be careful in that situation. We knocked that one down. God, there's so many of them. I also just heard a gunshot. We may want to get out of here. They may start swarming just because of that. We're a little bit winded, which means our swing speed's going to be lower. Kind of just want to sit here and let our little pink lungs rest. All right, I think she's ready to go. She looks to be softened up suitably. And he's down now. Let's take a look at the durability of our weapon because I really... I would hate to waste my time with it if we're just completely and totally wasting our weaponized resources. That's a bad thing. Oh god. Yeah, here they come. I don't know where they came from, but the gunshot must have been triggered from around here. It's not from an actual survivor. It's actually just a random event that triggers sometimes with the game, so we're gonna have to leg it. And if we find ourselves on the lamb for too long, it's going to turn into a nasty situation, but I think we'll be alright. These fences break line of sight, so I think if we can get into the neighborhood over here, we should be more or less home free. You can't jump these fences, they're too tall. That's one of those things. So if you're running away from the enemy and you come across these fences, do not waste your time tapping on E. It will not work for you as far as I know. And so we are on the run, unfortunately. We were driven away from our home a tad. It's okay, though. We need to search... What was that? I hear the sound of moaning, angry little zombies. Do zombies have emotions? I like to think they do. They seem not so grumpy, but they seem to have like that cat-like mood where they're just kind of just like, Argh. just like condescending all the time. Never happy with anything that they get. We'll check some of these little, this looks kind of like the projects to be honest, but we'll give it a go. We'll see if an alarm goes off. We should be okay. We'll grab the remainder of these bowls real fast, and now we're overburdened. We need to remedy that as quickly as possible. We're going to eat an onion. That's, that's how desperate we are for sustenance right now. We're going to eat an onion just straight up. Throw all of those bowls in there, along with a lot of the other things that we really don't need in our instantaneous inventory, like the peanut butter, a lot of the heavier objects. The tomato I don't think we're going to need. Two water bottles. We don't really need two water bottles. We only need the one, so we'll throw that in there. And then I think we should be good. So let's go ahead and raid the fridge real fast. Nothing there. There's a can opener. We're actually going to take that. We're going to take the canned soup as well because we want to start getting non-perishable goods that aren't going to go rotten on us. There's another empty mug right there that we can fill with water if things ever get a little out of control. We're going to fill the empty mug from the toilet there. We'll also get a drink real fast. Unfortunately, oh, there's a sink right there. My care. There's a sink right there. What are you doing, man? Let me drink out of it. No, drink out of the toilet. I command you. Cue the grumpy cat meme. Yeah, they're all being drawn towards something right now. We want to lay low. What they're being drawn towards, I can't necessarily tell you. But they are definitely on the move. The horde seems to be shifting. The shambling army here. I don't think... Does that one see me? It does, unfortunately. A couple of them see me. So let's get out of here. We already raided the building anyways. So trying to keep myself as low to the ground as possible, we're going to continue looting and making our way into the city as rapidly as possible. Oh good, a zombie broke a window and it set off an alarm. Oh, and there's a horde over there. Even better. Even better, my friends. Even better. Luckily, we have all the things we need to survive 
on the road, so there's not a whole lot to panic about right now. Oh, man. God, you got to be kidding me. All right, so they should all be headed that way, so cutting this way should allow me to come in nice and clean the all behind them, especially since they can't get around those fences. It's going to give us a time to stretch our legs anyways. We'll kind of wait here for a moment and see who comes out of the forest. How many of you guys do I have to deal with? Go ahead and take care of her real fast. So that there is no confusion about the ass kicking we will lay down on a zombie if it gets out of line. Call us the regulators, we suit up. So that fence looks like it's going to be contiguous all the way over there. And so let's cut down. And see where there's a gap in this fence that we can escape through. For now, I am willing to bet that our home may be inaccessible for a little bit, so we might consider going back. I don't know, I might run back in between episodes, but I don't want to bore you guys with that right now. I may actually start ditching some of this extra stuff that's just sitting around in my inventory. We got some food and some things of that nature. I don't really think we should settle anyways. The only thing that I would really want from the location that we fortified already is that pistol and all those bullets. But the pistol, as I said, is very dangerous to use. It's going to get you into a lot of trouble. Typically, I saved pistols for, like, other survivors who were trying to threaten me or had, like, shotguns, things of that nature. Looks like we got a nice little crowd of Zeddies over here. Let's take a look and see what we can do down here. Because I really am not interested in making any new friends at the moment. All my old friends are dead, and I don't really need any new friends. They have green skin. Typically, zombies turn kind of bluey in stories. I think it's interesting, although he's not blue. He stayed his normal color. He didn't have any discoloration as a result of... God. He was capable of making a racket coming from that one zombie. I don't know if that's a bug sound file or what that was, but... Oh, lovely. Good, 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 good. And so we've made a few more friends, and they are quick shamblers, which means they actually outrun us. Unfortunately in our normal walk mode, so we're gonna have to run along the line of this fence here We're gonna try and go behind all these Zeds. Maybe we'll find our way out here and keep ourselves safe I'm not exactly sold on abandoning all the cool kit that we left in that other house We've Got some casualties over here a bunch of zombies in the house. These might have been potential survivors Who are working in tandem? It's difficult to tell you kind of have to assign your own value to this kind of things Because you don't see them running around anymore since they were removed from the game The game just kind of randomly puts other survivors dead all over the place And so you just kind of there's another one right there God And it's difficult to tell if they're dead zombies or if they're survivors that died then reanimated then came back I don't know if there's anything over in this region I'm just kind of trying to circle around so I can go back to my house at some point Unfortunately, the game is not being obliging in that respect, so a big parking lot here for something? What is this? Pile of crepe. <laughs> pancake house. Well, I like pancakes. Let's check out the pancake house and see if we can work our way indoors. We set off an alarm. This could turn into a debacle, but, you know, you gotta risk it sometimes. Sometimes you have to spur the wind to ride the lightning, my friends. And so... There's also a number of zombies over here on the left. We'll pull him back and deal with him real quick. I don't think my weapon's anywhere near close to breaking just yet. He's quicker though, so I really, I've got to time this properly. There we go, so we've killed him as well. That noise right there means we should have leveled up. Yeah, our blunt leveled up. So we'll go ahead and put a point into blunt. And there it is. And so we're now a little bit better at bludgeoning things. Something that in real life, I like to caveman things in real life. So that's a skill set that I have respect for. If you're ever wondering if there's anything around you, you can just hold down the control key and just kind of spiral like that to make sure. There's another speedy one. And down she goes. Alright, so let's keep working on this Waffle House here. Instead of getting sidetracked trying to annihilate loads of zombies. Hopefully this window will allow us in. I'm interested to see what there might be. I'm willing to bet it's probably just going to be loads of flour and sugar. There's no real guarantee that there's going to be anything amazing that I want in here, but it's worth a shot. I mean, I don't hate the prospects of getting free stuff in any regard, so... If we had a fire axe, I'd just chop this bad boy down and we'd just be done with it, but unfortunately we don't have one yet. I don't really want to break a window because there's a bunch of zombies just sitting around over here. Let me see if I can cut this corner safely. No. There's a bunch of zombies. Apparently, crepes are incredibly popular among the zombie kind. So I think I'm just going to regrettably walk away from the situation. There's far too many Zeds around here. We're risking a potential major issue. Here's a few more, but they all look like they're facing the same direction. 
And a potential horde over there. God. This entire situation is just no fun, you guys. No fun whatsoever. Let's follow this road up a little bit. We'll use the fence as an LOS block. Use it as cover, kind of. And then we're getting drowsy, so we're probably going to want to make our way back home anyways. And that one actually just bore the brunt of our attacks without even flinching. Put him down real quick. We should see a marginal increase in our attack power. Now that we've leveled up Blunt a little bit, we should be able to take out zombies a little quicker. You can get pretty good at it once you get further on into the game. If you get yourself up to like 5 Blunt, you can pretty much just run through waves of mobs, like sweeping. Sweeping ridiculously and just annihilating everything. Let's be careful as we go through these suburbs here. It's getting a little dark. I may tuck in. If I get nervous about where we're at, I may tuck into one of these little side places. Oh my god, there are so many. Alright, well, let's see what we can pull off here. I'm just going to run straight by them because we've got to head back this way anyways. See if I can keep myself from getting tired out. We're going to cut around the back here and see if this will break off the line of sight that all these guys appear to have on me. It's starting to get to be nighttime, so if it gets dark enough, we're not going to have to worry about it anyways. Realistically, I think we should be fine, though. I don't actually think we made it that far out of our own stomping zone. We might for a moment consider infiltrating this house. If a burglar alarm doesn't go off, we may want to bed down here for the night. Just keep ourselves nice and safe in the greater scheme of things. We do still have a Zed coming after us though, so we'll probably want to move along. God, there's so many. I prefer to stay away from the forest at night. It seems like a... A zero-sum game right there. It's probably not going to turn out well for me in any case. I've got one of the quicker ones right there. When they reanimate, there is internally, I've read that there's internally some kind of timer that determines how fast the zombies are going to be in various situations. So the ones that were just recently reanimated are a lot faster. But the ones that are not so recently reanimated tend to get kind of shambly and have a lot more trouble trying to catch you. Now is this the... Are we on the edge of the trailer park right now? Oh, we are. Okay, so we're on the edge of the trailer park. Let's find a trailer to bed down in. We've already cleared out a lot of the alarms and things of that nature anyways, so it's probably going to be safest just to find a trailer and put our heads down and hope that we make it. It's getting pretty dark, so the chances of a zombie seeing us now are pretty minimal. The music's getting intense, though, and making me a little nervous. I don't know what that sound is that I'm hearing. God. What could make the situation worse? Now it's raining. Now it's raining, my friends. So we'll swing around the back side of this right here. God, sounds like there's zombies already in there. All right. Well, never mind then. I didn't want to go inside your building anyways. Maybe this one over here will be a bit more obliging. Zombie right there. Let's see if we can get this thing open no such luck unfortunately god take that zombie out looks like we got oh my god you got to be kidding me Are you serious all right, let's get the hell out of here. We're getting pretty tired, though, which increases our chances of just blacking out, unfortunately. This is why I prefer... And we're drenched. Great. Decided to rain all night, too. So we're in trouble, guys. We're in a reasonable amount of trouble. I wouldn't say we're in for a, health, like, well, a hefty helping of trouble, but we're definitely in for trouble, unfortunately, because things do not seem to be going well for us. The burglar alarms are a little too prevalent. Just a word of warning to the developers, nobody has this many burglar alarms. I don't know what society has this many burglar alarms, but I just don't see that being the case in any city, to be honest. It's so dark, I can't see for Jack. Oh my god, they're everywhere. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, jeez. Alright, so let's see if we can weave our way through them as best as possible. I can't see for anything right now, but we do got to get away. That's the one thing I know, is we just cannot risk being out and about with all these dudes around. 
We are very tired at the moment, and they appear to have super extra sensory abilities. I apologize for running around in the pitch black right now. This is how the developers have designed the game, so... Alas, there's not a whole lot I can do for you. Looks like we got a house over here. I'm gonna try and make my way to it. We're gonna break into it at any cost. And try and rest for the evening. Well, unfortunately, I can't see well enough. And I'm just going to have her sit here and work on the window. Alright, we're in. Oh my god, are you serious? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, the burglar alarms are a little too prevalent. I, uh, I have problems with this. <laughs> god. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. We're going to die. I'm pretty sure we're going to die. Looks like there may be another house out in here, but it's so dark that I can't tell. Jeez. Alright, so we're safe now. Oh my, my friends. Ugh. The wear and tear of a terrible day in Project Zomboid is definitely... starting to, uh... starting to eke its tendrils into my brain. I'm not frustrated or anything, it's just like, wow, that is a lot of burglar alarms. I don't know, I've never seen this many burglar alarms, we're just having terrible, terrible luck. So there's some bullets in here. I know the way back to our home, so I think for now, I'm gonna try and... Yeah, let's just jump into bed right now, we'll sleep for the evening. Because we're pretty tired, we're probably gonna get sick because we're pretty damp. I closed the door, so we should wake up if anything goes wrong. This is probably a great spot to break off the episode. So as you can tell, this game is intense. I literally have sweat on my brow right now as I struggle through this whole thing. That was very, very close, you guys. You don't know how close we came to actually being a casualty there. But we're all right. It's those close calls that make this game so much more fun. So I'm going to raid the fridge here, and I'm going to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another fantastic episode of Project Zomboid. I'm really feeling the heat right now. I'm having a lot of fun with the new build, and I hope to see you guys next time. So take care out there, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.